everyone, it's me Maddie, and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Maddie, and I post videos every single Monday and Fridays. I post stuff related to Tales of Arcadia or just edits in general. Um, Mondays are usually book videos, but come July, they want to become a little bit more Troll Hunters or Tales of Arcadia related as well. So, hi, welcome to my channel. Today, we're here to do Probably my favorite tag, simply because I don't do many tags, that is the mid-year book freakout tag. Because yes, it is already the end of uh, June, it's now July, I'm actually filming this on the 3rd, and tomorrow is 4th of July, so happy 4th of July to all of my Americans. Uh, even though you're not going to see this until afterwards, still, happy 4th of July. We should celebrate our soldiers every single day of our lives. Uh, but yeah, today we're here to do this video and answer these tags. Let's get into this. I've already filmed it twice. The first time I uh, ran out of space, second time it was 30 minutes, worth, 30 minutes worth of film, and I just don't want to do that again. So, let's try and do it better than this time. Alright, so the first question is the best book you've read so far in 2021, and for that I'm picking The False Prince by Jennifer A. Nielsen. Uh, I've only read three five stars this year, um, so it wasn't really that difficult of a choice. Um, the reason I picked this one though out of all the other two is simply the fact I read this in three days and I loved every single minute of it. I loved the main character, uh, Sage. I, I always want to say Siege even though I know it's Sage so I like to double check, but I loved Sage. I love his character, and I just, I really enjoyed the plot. Uh, I also predicted how this book ended, but that didn't really, like, affect my enjoyment of it at all. In fact, I found that when I predict endings of books, I usually find them more enjoyable than when I don't. Um, or I don't enjoy them any less than the ones I don't predict the endings of. But yeah, I really, really liked this. Um, I don't know if I haven't decided if I'm going to do descriptions of the books or not, but this is the first book in a series of four, and I actually own the second one right here. I haven't read it yet, but yeah, I really, really liked this book, and I'm excited to get to the second one eventually. My goal is to get to it by the end of this year, because uh, if I don't, I will never get to it, probably. A lot of series, that's how it turns out. So the second question is the best sequel you've read so far this year, and I have not read very many good sequels. In fact, I haven't really read that many, like, great books. I've read a lot of three stars, as I got some two stars, uh, and I haven't really read, like, the best sequel yet. But I have read one pretty good sequel. I've also read some Alex Rider books that were really good, but I think that this book is better than Alex Rider's I read so far, and that is The Half-Blood Prince by J.K. Rowling. I read the entire Harry Potter series. Um, I have a video on that. I will leave that link in the description box at the end of this video at the end screen. But I read this. It was four stars. I just honestly... It's the best sequel I've read this year. I can't give you a reason why. I mean, maybe because it was the most enjoyable of a story. I liked Harry and Jenny in this book. I really liked Harry in this book. I love Harry as a character in general. Uh, so I liked Harry in, in this book a lot. Um, but yeah, that's the best sequel I've read this year. All my other sequels have been below a three, except for a couple of Alex writers. But like I said, they don't come above this one in place of the best. So... Harry Potter it is. Always a great fallback for these type of questions, isn't it? Okay, so the next question is a new release that you have not yet read yet, but you would like to. I have a couple. I got two physicals and I have one ebook, so let's go with the ebook first. Uh, I would like to read Malice by Heather Walter, I think her name is. I got an e arc of this from NetGalley and I just never read it so I've stopped I've since stopped requesting uh, arcs from that galley because I just haven't been reading them I haven't really been reading a lot though at this point of time I have read more books than I have last year when I filmed this tag uh, but I mean I haven't really read that much on my own mostly me and my granny uh, this book I hate the American cover the US cover I hate so much it is so ugly in my opinion. It looks like a Wattpad cover. And I'm not saying that Wattpad, like, that's a bad, I'm not saying that, I mean, I'm, I am saying that as, like, this. But, like, Wattpad covers for Wattpad books are fine. This is not a Wattpad book. I just, I hate the cover. I do really like the UK cover, though. It reminds me a lot of the Wicked, uh, Broadway play. That cover is, that kind of gives me Wicked vibes. And so I love the UK cover, but I hate the American cover. Uh, and I just wanted to mention that, because I've never been able to say in the video. But since I can now, 
there you go. I also have these two hardcovers. I have Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston. This is a middle grade. It has been, it's been, a lot of people say if you are a fan of Nevermore, then you should read this. And I am a fan of Nevermore. The first two books in that series anyways. I did not like the third one. Uh, but I did like Nevermore. I think I would like this book as well. Um, but I haven't read it yet simply because I'm going to be saving it so my granny and I can read it together. I just think my granny and I would really enjoy reading this. My granny likes Nevermore. Uh, I like Nevermore. This is for fans of Nevermore. I think this would be a good read for us to do together. So I just have to wait for her to get a copy of it from her library as soon as the library gets it in. And we will be reading it probably early next year or late next year. I will see if we're going to be reading this. But yes, I am excited to get to this eventually. Um, and then I also have Reaper of Souls by Rana Baron. This is a sequel to Kingdom of Souls. I read that in 2019, October. I was on vacation, studied the art of animation. Uh, and I binged that book. I loved the first book a lot. I gave it four stars. Um, but I did predict the ending of the first book as well. I predicted the whole big plot twist with Amari. Is her, no, her name's not Amari. I'm sorry. It's Ara, or it's A. It's A R R A H. I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't. I knew it was an A name. I just said Amari. It just kind of flowed. Now there's something in my eyeball. So I apologize if I'm picking at it. But I loved the first book, and even though I did predict the ending with it, I am excited to see how it comes around. I have a short story that follows the Demon King, I think it's what, or the Demon Prince, whatever it's called. I have a short story in my Gmail inbox that I would like to read, but I'm not going to read it until I at least reread the last 50 pages of the first book, because I don't think I would enjoy it as much as I did the first time around upon reread, because, uh... I remember a lot of the stuff that happens. I just don't re exactly remember like the last scene, the last couple of scenes. So I need to reread like the last chapter or two chapters before I get into this book and read the short story. Uh, but yeah, it's also going to be a trilogy now. So I'm thinking I might just wait for the third book. That's what Goodreads says. I thought it was a duology, but now it might be a trilogy. So yes, I would also I also want to get to this though eventually. I mean, I bought a hardcover of it, so. Alright, so question number four is your most anticipated release for the second half of 2021. Listen, I don't have many books on my anticipated for 2021 releases simply because I'm really like reading backlist. I, I own a lot of backlist. Uh, so I don't actually have a book that fits this question because what the original answer would have been would have been the ninth book in the Keeper of the Lost City series by Shannon Messenger. My granny and I buddy read that series together. But it's been pushed back, and I'm perfectly fine with it being pushed back because I want a good book. I don't want a stupid piece of crap that was unlocked. I don't want another one of those, okay? I want a nice, good book that is worth my $20, okay? So I'm fine waiting a year. I'll wait up to five freaking years for this book if it's worth it. <sighs> I really hope it's worth it because Shannon, you need to freaking have a plot. Move your books along, Shannon. Move them along. Anyway, uh, we're getting off the topic because I think that's why the last time I filmed this was 30 minutes because I went off a nice lovely little rant about why I'm mad at the Keeper of Love City series. So let's move on real quick. I'm sorry that wasn't a very exciting question, uh, but congrats on your baby Shannon. I hope, I wish you and your child well. Question number five is your biggest disappointment now. <laughs> I haven't read very many good books this year, so I kind of had a lot to pick from, but I definitely would have to say that The Secret of Whitestone Gate by Julia Nobel is my biggest disappointment. I gave this two stars, I believe. I think my granny gave it like a 2.5, a 2, or a 3. Uh, this was such a disappointment. My first five star of the year was the first book in this uh, duology mystery series. I don't know. I think this is a duology, which is one of the reasons why it was so bad, in my personal opinion, but if there's a third book, then it might not be as bad as I'm thinking. Uh, but there's no, like, uh, hey, there's a third book, and it didn't really lead into a third book, so, yeah. But this book, I, this was so disappointing. The First of all, the mystery element in this book wasn't that good to start off with. It was more of, like, follow Emmy when she goes back to school after the events of the first book. There were still some things left open at the end of the first book that you were kind of curious in with this one, but... They really didn't play that big of a role, and they kind of all wrapped up at the end, or actually, they didn't really all wrap up, because one of the reasons I dislike this book so much is of how it ended, and my granny really dislikes the ending as well. Um, the ending was so, like, 
unsatisfying it answered it didn't answer like any questions really it left so many like questions that you wanted to ask like what happened to this person and like what about this it left a lot of stuff unanswered and it just was so unsatisfying to read you're like what in the world did I just do the entire book was so boring and it needed to be ending and it's still boring they went to a museum at the end of it I just, I didn't like it. I didn't like any of the new characters. There were three new characters. I didn't really like a single one of them. A lot of the, like, I predicted how they were going to affect the plot, really. It wasn't that surprising at all. So, this was definitely my biggest disappointment. So, question number six is your biggest surprise. And as we've already talked about the bad book in this series, let's talk about the good book. So, my biggest surprise is The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane. Now, I found this book off of Jen from Jen's Bookshelf Recommendation. I think she gave it like a four star. And the main reason I was really curious in it was because I was looking for some books for my granny and I to buddy read together. It was just the start of our buddy reading journey and we hadn't really found any books or really like big series to like jump into and dive into. Uh, so I ended up putting this on my wish list on Amazon and my mom bought it for me and so I had a copy of it and my granny and I just decided to read it together. We needed a book. It was there. We picked it up. We read it and both my granny and I absolutely loved it. Now I didn't think I wasn't going to like this book. I added it to my wish list for a reason, but uh, I haven't read like any thrillers except a couple of middle grade mysteries, thrillers. Can you really say a middle grade is a could be a thriller? I don't know. Uh, but I haven't really read much in that genre. I mostly stick with fantasy, if you cannot tell by my lovely bookshelves. Uh, so I haven't read much in that genre, and I just... I don't know. This just ended up surprising me, I guess, how much I loved it. I love Emmy. I love Jack. I love, um, I thought the writing style was really good. I connected with right away. I read this book so fast. Like, I took, like, 50 days, 50 pages a day, right, to read this book. But every time I sat down to read it, I flew through my daily reading. It was so good. And my granny and I actually wanted to read more than we had been we had been assigned, uh, which has not happened since Sophie's books or, or Keep of the Lost Cities. You probably don't know what I mean by Sophie. There's a lot of books with characters named Sophie, but that's what my granny and I refer to it as, is Sophie's books. So, uh, yeah, this was a good, big surprise, a good surprise, and I really enjoyed it. Okay, so question number seven is a new to you author, whether they are debut or simply new to me. And I'm going to put two answers. I only have one, uh, but I'm going to put two. Uh, so but the first one is Julia Nobel. While I liked one of her books, very, very much so disliked her other one, I would still be interested in picking up any of the other books she writes if they interest me. I would still give her another try, and I did. I do like her writing style. It's just that the second book of hers I read didn't have that good of a plot. I just don't think it was very strong of a book. And the second author I'm going to put is Guillermo del Toro, who wrote this book right here, which yes, guys, it will be showing up, I promise you. Just give it a couple more questions. Um, I put this on here at last second, just added it, because I like the way the Troll Hunters was written. I, I, I went through it rather quickly. And so I would be interested in reading at least one other book from him and just to see if I like his writing style, if I like, or if my enjoyment of Troll Hunters and his writing style was based solely on, or mostly from the TV show on Netflix. So yeah, Guillermo and Julia. I'm sorry if I mispronounced his name. I'm not that good at speaking Spanish. Or rolling my R's or my L's or anything. So, question number eight. Is your newest fictional crush now? You see. I'm gonna bend the rules. This says newest fictional crush. It doesn't actually pertain to a book. It is a book tag, but it doesn't say your newest fictional crush from a book. It just says newest fictional crush. So, I'll give you one from a book. Sage from The False Prince. I really like him. Uh, I liked him from the first second we met him. Uh, he was stealing a turkey and I was like, yes, my guy. Get that turkey. And I really just, I fell in love with Sage the moment we read from him. But the guy I'm a bigger simp for, if you don't already know, is my dude, Jim Lake Jr. Or from the book, it's Jim Sturges, but I prefer Jim Lake Jr. over Jim Sturges. I prefer being able to make jokes over water and lakes and oceans than I do over motorcycles. It just, I vibe more with this one. Uh, but 
Jim Lake Jr. is my newest fictional crush. I absolutely adore this man. Uh, he is just so much fun. I love the show he's in as well. I just, I don't know. I love Jim. He's so cute too. Guys, guys, have you seen him in the movie? Look at him. Look at him in the movie. Look at his scars and his hair moves when he moves. <sighs> I love this guy. I love him. I I love him. And even though my reels on Instagram about troll hunters don't get many views as my miraculous ones do sometimes. I'm pretty sure I've been shadow banned, so I'm not getting views at all. Anyways, uh, I still really enjoy making troll hunters reels and uh, my guy Jim, he's now my profile picture on Instagram. So follow me on Instagram, link down below. But I love Jim. I also like Sage. So there's that. But I like Jim more. Alright, the next question I have Jim and Sage down as, but I'm going to see if I can find a different character so I can talk about a different book. Uh, because I don't want to have Jim and Sage on here again, though Jim deserves to be mentioned as many times as possible. Troll Hunters deserves to be mentioned as many times as possible. But let's go and see if I can find a different character. So most of the books I've read this year uh, have been in the same series, so I didn't actually have that many characters to pick from, but I guess I'll do this one, though Jim and Sage are still the top out of this year, but I want to give y'all a different que a different answer. So question number nine is your newest favorite character, and while he isn't my favorite character, I didn't have that many options, and I want to give him a shout out. So we have Nico from uh, ha Heroes of Olympus. I like Nico. I picked this book specifically because Nico actually plays a part of this book. Um, and I I liked Nico when I read Percy Jackson. I my favorite characters are Percy in this series, and I also really like Nico. And Jason's fine. He's fine. Uh, but out of all of them, I would like to only read from their point of views. I don't like anyone else's point of views. I don't like this series, actually. Uh, very disappointed in this series. But I don't mind Nico. So, newest favorite character, he doesn't really fit it. But again, a different answer for y'all. Nico from this series or from the entire Percy Jackson universe is pretty good. Uh, I like him. I really like the relevations he has in this book. So... So, question number 10 is a book that made you cry. Uh, and I haven't actually full on sobbed yet this year, which I know doesn't really make much sense because I'm sensitive and I cry pretty easily. Uh, but I have teared up at a book and that would be The Troll Hunters by Del Toro. Uh, I liked this book a lot and the things I teared up at we're actually at the end of the book. The thing that, let's see, I teared up at the end of chapter uh, 33, the last couple sentences, I teared up a lot right there. Um, but another thing that made me tear up the most out of this book, and it was just like a tear up, I think one tear fell down my cheek, was my favorite quote of all time, uh, my ninja, my troll hunter. I mentioned this quote in several videos at the moment. I can remember I filmed them quite close together, so I know I've mentioned them in quite a couple videos. But that is my favorite quote from this book. From all the quotes, all the books I've read, right now that is my favorite quote of all time. Uh, and it made me tear up, and I love it because I love Toby and Jim's friendship in the TV show, and I did like them in this book as well. But it didn't make me sob. It just made me tear up. Alright, book number, no, question number 11 is a book that made you happy. Now, I was going to put Troll Hunters on here because I did thoroughly get, like, happy. It made, me happy. it made me joyful. I laughed a lot while reading that. But, um, it's still a Troll Hunters related book. It is just The Art of Troll Hunters, Tales of Arcadia. This is a book that goes behind, like, the characters and the the artifacts and the how to create a sequence and stuff like that. That's what this book is about and I read this in one day and it made me really really happy just to read it and see more of this like to see these characters and I don't know I just I really enjoyed it. I just enjoyed being able to like look through this read information on these characters that I adore and I love a lot. Uh, so yeah, this one made me happy. It made me really happy, and I would totally recommend getting this if you are a fan of Troll Hunters or art. 
this is pretty interesting to read, even if I think you enjoy it more if you're a fan of Troll Hunters, but it was a pretty interesting read itself. Question number 12 is the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year, and that is The Coward by Stephen Iran. A. Ryan by Stephen. Uh, I I love this book cover. I think it's so simplistic, but it, it's so beautiful. Uh, I've actually started this book. I just haven't found the time to continue on with it. I'm 44 pages into it, and I did enjoy what I was reading. But I love this cover, and I don't know. I just think it's so pretty in real life. It's stunning. I found I bought this book because of the cover and because of Holly Hart's books. She mentioned it, and I was like, yeah, that sounds interesting. Like a hero who doesn't want to be a hero. I could try that. I've never read that trope before, to my knowledge. But I was interested in it, and I don't know, it co I love the cover, I like the material the cover's made out of, and the spine's also really pretty, but this is definitely my prettiest book I've bought so far this year, um, so, yes. Okay, so question number 13 is a book or multiple books you'd like to read by the end of 2021, and I have four to give to you. I have two that I haven't started yet, and I have two that I have started yet, uh, or already. Uh, so, let's go with the ones I have not yet started. Uh, I have The Runaway King by Jennifer A. Nielsen. This is the sequel to The False Prince. I already talked about The False Prince in this video, and I mentioned this one uh, offhandedly. This I would like to get to because I will, I don't want to forget about it. I enjoyed the first book, and I'm still, like, I still have a good mindset. I remember books really well, but there's certain factors or certain points of books I can forget really easily, and then I'll, I don't want to have to reread the books to continue on with the series, because I don't want to have, because I already remember the main plot, and so it's not enjoyable to reread a book you remember point for point. Um, so, I really want to get to this before it, The False Prince it gets to the point where I remember all of it, except for a few points that I should re probably reread it for. Um, I don't know what this book's about. I'm also kind of scared to go into this because I love the first book so much and the first book could actually like end as a standalone obviously it's a series but if you didn't want to read anymore you could end it as the first book and that's why I'm scared because I'm scared this would be like a pointless book uh, but I don't know I, a lot of people have given this good ratings I just I want more of Sage in this world and I, I have I have more of it I just haven't read it yet even though I've had it since I've finished the first book also on a book I have not read yet, but haven't even started that I want to read. Also on this list is My Calamity Jane by the Lady Janies. Uh, I usually read these books while I'm on vacation, and I have a copy of it now. I went on vacation in uh, May, had a great time, and I'm going back there in September. So uh, I will be able to read this in September. It is like perfect too, because I read these books in Florida while I'm on vacation in Florida, and I usually pick them up and read them by a pool. And my entire September trip is going to be by water. And so I'm very excited to finally get into this. This is like a Western, uh, a Western Janie book. And I just want to read this book so I can finally start the Mary series. Uh, whenever I get a copy of that book, I will re be reading that one on vacation. These are my vacation books, y'all. What do you want me to do? Um, and also, this is a Western book. I've never read a Western book, but I'm excited to see if this is like my jam, my type of style, because Natalia Lee actually has a Western themed book that I would really want to read and give a try. So yeah, this will be my trial run on whether or not I enjoy Western themes or that setting. So there we go. Now we're moving on to the two books that I started last year, actually, and have not finished yet. We have Superman Dawnbreaker by Matt De La Pena. Ah, oh, this piece of crap. I hate this book so much. I am 39 pages into this piece of crap, and I, I know, you're like, well, why do you want to finish it if you don't like it? Obviously, I don't like it. I want to finish it so I can write a rant on it, or simply rate it the one star. I want to be able to do that, and I know, Madison, Madison, there's no need for that type of hatred in this world, and I understand that. Most of the time, I DNF books I'm not enjoying, but this is one that I simply have to finish and I simply need to be able to dislike. It's just one of the books that I have like a like a I wanna I, I want to get revenge on it. I want to avenge myself, my father who bought this book for me, and I just want 
to be able to say I read this book and hated it. I just want to hate this book, y'all. That's all I want, okay, is to be able to hate this book. And that is why I'm going to finish it. And I know you're probably thinking that, wow, that's really dumb of you. Wow, what a waste of your time. Wow. And I understand. I get where you're coming from. But I just, I want to do that. There's, like, come on. You can't say that you've never read a book and finished it so, just because you wanted to be able to hate on it. And because you, like, started it, you did not like it, and you wanted to hate on it. I went into this with high hopes. I liked Catwoman. I went into this thinking it was going to be good. But it's not. And Matt, Matt, get your political opinions out of my book, okay? Get them out of here. Uh, but yeah, I'm like highlighting it, going through, highlighting stuff uh, of that I just, I'm like annotating everything I hate about this book. And if I, I mean, not everything, because then this entire book would be blue fonted. Uh, but yeah, I just want to be able to hate this book. And you, if you want to hate me for wanting to hate this book, that's perfectly fine. You know, maybe you just need to hate a person. And I will gladly be that person you hate. Uh... But yeah, I just, I want to finish this to be able to rate it one view, one one star. I just want to finish it to give it one star. That's all I want, okay? That's all I want. <sighs> On a happier note, I have The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. It's another book I would like to finish this year. Uh, because... I read the first 50 pages and I really liked it. Also, I have one of my favorite bookmarks in here and I would like to finally be able to use it again. But I read the first 50 pages and I really enjoyed it. I just never picked it back up after my birthday came and I got my birthday books and then Christmas came and I got my Christmas books and I just, I never picked it back up. And now I'm not reading that much on my own, so yeah. But I really like this book. I was hoping, I'm hoping it will make me sad and I will cry, maybe ball while reading this book. Uh, and I hope this will be a five star. So there we go. I want to finish one book that I've already started with giving it one star. And I want to finish this book with the hopes that it will be a five star. So there you go. There you go. Okay, if there you go. If you're mad at me for wanting to finish a book to hate it, be happy that I'm going to finish a book, hopefully going to love it as well. So yeah, I want to read this. I've heard really good things, and I just, it's not in my usual genre. Uh, but I want to be able to enjoy it, read it, and do all of that. Well, <laughs> that was a video, of, I'll tell you that. Uh, it was not exactly 30 minutes. It was 30 minutes of footage. And my USD card is about to fill up. So, I want to go. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Tell me your answer to these questions down in the, below in the description box. I would like to read them. I read every single comment I get, so feel free to comment whatever you want. Uh, no hate, though, unless you want to hate on me for hating a book and still continue to read it. That is fine with me. Bye, everyone. I love you, and I'll see you guys all next Monday for another video. Hey, don't forget I'm still a freaking bulldozer. Bye, everyone.